Hello and welcome to Changing What's Possible, the Disability Innovation Podcast brought to you by the Cerebral Palsy Alliance Research Foundation. I'm your host, Dr. Marie McNeely, and this season we are excited to bring you remarkable stories of life-changing technology. And today we have with us Keith Kirkland from the company WearWorks. And Keith is going to talk about their product, Wayband, which is changing how people who are blind or have visual impairments are able to navigate the world in their everyday lives. And in the second half of our episode today, we're going to hear from Markeith Price, an elite track and field athlete and two-time Paralympian with limited vision who has been using Wayband. So listeners, let's get started. Keith, thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you so much for having us. Well, we are excited to be with you today and excited to learn from you. So can you start by telling us more about WearWorks and your role in the company? Yeah, I'm happy to. Firstly, my name is Keith Kirkland. I'm one of the co-founders at WearWorks. I'm also the head of haptics, sales, and customers. So I did a lot with our users directly. And WearWorks is a haptic platform company. Haptic means touch. We build products and experiences that use the skin as a communications channel to deliver information in a more intuitive and less obtrusive way. So we've decided to start with the use case of navigation. Navigation is inherently visual, but also it's essential to us all. 77% of people use navigation apps on their smartphone monthly. And so we felt like in this very useful but super strongly visual medium, was there a better way to do navigation with using just a sense of touch? We were deeply inspired by one of our advisors who my co-founder, Kevin, you met in our earlier years at Pratt before we started the company around the challenges that he had around getting around campus. And Kevin thought haptics would be a really interesting way of applying it to navigation. Meanwhile, in that same time, I was using haptics for a totally different purpose. I was basically trying to build a suit that would allow a person to download Kung Fu and the suit would help them learn Kung Fu in a repeatable and healthy way using only vibration. And so I had lots of personal injuries. And ultimately, I saw this suit as some kind of potential therapy mechanism, but more importantly, just a way to learn movement safely. So I was using haptics for movement and around our time together, and when we both graduated, we have both done a project at the Metropolitan Museum of Art as their Media Lab Fellows Program. So we knew of each other's types of work. And when we came together, really, it was around the idea of navigation for me was just like, wow, that's just a simpler form of movement than Kung Fu. And so I felt like if we could figure out navigation, then we could scale this to more advanced forms of movement later and ultimately create a language around touch that would help people from a point of view of movement. So that was like my entry into this doorway of how do we use the skin as a communications channel to deliver information in a more intuitive way. Oh, that's very cool. And it sounds like you have a lot of innovative ideas. So how specifically did you decide upon starting WearWorks? And maybe why did you decide to focus on the mission of this particular company? When I graduated in 2015, I had had a previous background in mechanical engineering. So a bachelor's degree, I, I went back to school, this time to the Fashion Institute of Technology, where I earned another bachelor's degree in handbag and shoe design. I was designing handbags for a while for an industry, Calvin Klein, the sports ad coach. I was in varying roles there and kind of went back to school again for a third time to get a master's degree, really because I wanted to figure out new ways of using design to help forward humanity. So when I left school, that project really for me was like, I miss fashion so much. So I was like, how can I do this with everything that I've learned now and do fashion in a totally different way than I've done it before. And so when I graduated, I set out to create that company to build that Kung Fu suit. And so it was really meeting with Kevin and Young who saw this as an opportunity for accessible navigation for people who are blind. When Marcus came to our school at Pratt and just had such a hard time getting around campus because we have this very big, beautiful sculpture garden and the buildings aren't necessarily so easy to find. That was like really the big inspiration that we came together and we decided like, wow, this could really change a lot of people's lives. And from my personal point of view, I basically saw The Matrix a thousand times and was like, why can't you download Kung Fu yet? <laughs> and I was like, oh, wait, you kind of can. Mm -hmm. Not really, but kind of sort of. But much more valuable than a suit that can download Kung Fu was a way that could help not just people who are blind and visually impaired, but all types of people who communicating information visually just isn't the best media. Like if you're driving, for example, if I look at my phone for a text message, I get a ticket. But I look at my phone at the map, nothing happens. It's because you can't not look at the map. 
So what if there was a better way when your eyes were too busy and we can give you that information through a different sense? So we saw this opportunity that showed up that was like, wow, you have all this skin. And basically from a design point of view, outside of fashion and home goods, furniture, we're basically doing nothing with it. But what if we turned it to the third communications channel? What if we brought it into the digital revolution with us so that we can use it instead of adding another icon on a heads up display that you then have to somehow read through accessibility features instead of having more audio and a person who is severely impaired or even blind hearing that's like clogging up their listening for what they needed for most, which is keeping themselves safe in their environment. So we saw the skin as this untapped potential to offload some of the overload of communication happened through only the visual and audio channel. And while all five senses ultimately need to make it to the digital experience, smell and taste are much further behind and touch was just poised. Because in your seven screens that are sitting around you, five of them have speakers, but three of them have haptic motors in them. And so that gave us a platform to be able to start to create ubiquitous experience in haptics. But right now, the only thing we do with haptics is hey, watch me, phone, come look at me, right? (laughs) Right, right. And we just felt like if I were to kiss you or to punch you in the face, you would have so much information really fast right now. How can we tap into that so that we're delivering meaningful information, not just, hey, look at me, basically. I love it. And so for our listeners out there who might not be familiar with Wayband at this point, what is it? Can you describe it and how it works? Yes, so the Wayband is a haptic navigation app that pairs with our optional haptic wristband called the Wayband. It gently navigates you to your end destination using only vibration without the need for any visual or audio feedback. Now, of course, we have visuals, we have audio, but they aren't necessary to have the core of the experience. So imagine the haptic compass. When you're going the right way, you feel absolutely nothing. No vibrations at all. You deviate slightly left or right in a little swivel, about 10 or 20 degrees either side, a setting that you can control, of course, and you'll get a slight vibration. And as you spin wronger away from the way that you have to be facing, the vibration will get stronger and stronger, louder and louder. And so you're 180 degrees the wrong way where we give you the loudest vibration. So ultimately, your goal is to find your way to the open space. And when you get to the open space, you know that you're going in the right way. And people have termed that the haptic corridor, which is they feel like there's a haptic wall on the left or right side as they swing their way back from left to right as they walk to feel kind of like safety walking down this pathway. That is amazing. I'm glad you brought this description and helps us sort of imagine in our minds how this works, what it looks like. What makes it different, though, I guess, from other solutions that might be available for people who have limited vision or other disabilities? I think the big piece is is that we're really leaning on touch first as an experience. And if you look at haptics, most of the time haptics is a secondary mode of communication. It's meant to get your attention so you can look or so you can listen or is tied to a visual or audio experience. But for us, we're a haptics company. So we're leading with the haptic experience as the primary experience of the application. So you can look, you can listen, but really the beauty of the experience is is that you don't need to do any of that at all. And your eyes and your ears remain completely free to do, well, whatever you want to do while you walk around. Think about your startup's next problem or zone out and listen to birds chirping along your pathway, right? Pay attention to the cars and the traffic around you, potentially as a blind person or a person who's visually impaired. So those are really the opportunities that we really see is that the skin as a whole can be a communications channel, not just tied to a visual or audio experience. And some of the companies are doing some stuff in haptics and the market is starting to open up. But what we're realizing is, is they're using signals that are kind of like buzz, 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 buzz means this, buzz, 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 buzz means that, right? The challenge that you get into, it becomes like language learning mechanics. There's only a certain number of symbols that you can hold in your memory before it takes learning a new language almost. And we all know language acquisition is ridiculously slow and challenging. And so what we're doing is, is we're tapping into the idea of not haptic as words, but haptic as metaphor. I mean, this is a topic that we talk about internally a lot is what is the metaphor for stop? If your bag certainly got caught on a door, and you were walking, like that stop, that jerk that you feel, or if your mother grabbed your hand, rang it across the street as a child, the car stopping suddenly because another car stopped suddenly in front of it, that jerk that you feel, almost everyone understands that as an experience that they've been through of stopping. 
what if we could tag into that feeling and give you that feeling? And right now it's just theory, but my theory is that if I gave a thousand people that feeling when I think they should stop, they would get that feeling and stop. And they might not even understand why they felt the need to stop. So we can use touch to communicate in a different way if we get out of the lexicon of language as the only mechanism of communication. Definitely. I'm glad you brought up this idea of it sort of being intuitive, this idea that if you turn a certain way and you almost like feel like you're bumping into something, you're getting that vibration. It's like just natural for us to sort of move away or do the opposite of what you did that brought you to that feeling of vibration. It's been a pretty amazing experience because a big part of understanding vibration is one is understanding the vibration capabilities technically within motors and drivers and electronics and battery power to make those wearable. But the other piece is, is that a lot of it is human physiology and how does the brain process different touch information? Like for example, I think it's something along the line of if you move a finger over your skin at three centimeters a second or less, it registers to the human brain as a caress rather than a touch. And simply the speed and nothing about the intention at all in the touch can completely change a human being's reaction to that. So it's been a pretty amazing thing to like jump into the world because just like we have optical illusions where your eyes have kind of like met the limit of reality that they were designed to handle, they start kind of like messing up and you get these weird things happening. You have haptic illusions as well. So really tying into how do you use these illusions to basically design with and to create more opportunities within the space around design. So I think that's like, it's a really wonderful, just kind of channel to open up and to explore. We're starting with navigation, but really we're just opening up the sense of touch to figure out how can we really use this to like deliver information in a better way. Absolutely. And I really like that you developed this product with a lot of feedback from users and doing a lot of research along the way. So maybe can you talk about some of the experiences or impacts and how people are getting benefits or maybe potential benefits from using Wayband? Some of the benefits that people have been talking to us about, it's been really surprising. The biggest piece is, is when we first started, no one on our team was blind or visually impaired. We had met Marcus. He gave us a lot of advice, but of course, we can't build a product off of one person. And so we had to get a lot more feedback. So at first we started, we hired a few consultants who were blind or visually impaired to give us support. We really needed to understand deeply the lived experience of a person who was blind. So it was kind of like, hey, like walk me through like your morning routine. Get up, go to the morning, go to the bathroom, make tea, like coffee. Walk me through it visually or even sometimes actually. Because we were really trying to figure out where could the Wayband help? Because we really didn't 100% know exactly at what point the Wayband like should be introduced and exactly what subset of features it should support to make a person's mobility experience overall better. And so we talked to lots and lots of people. Lots of our accelerators came with opportunities to connect. The National Science Foundation gave us a grant and we had an opportunity to connect. Verizon and Remarkable Accelerators that we're in now, we've had opportunities to connect. But more importantly, I think that some of the biggest pieces have been the blind and visually impaired organizations. They've been ridiculously supportive from our point of view and just really given us access to the feedback and more importantly, their lived experience and their personal opinions. The thing I love about the community is that they don't hold any punches. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> if you bring something in that is like stupid, like I was like, Yo, what's the stupid thing that you brought in? <laughs> and we got, we got some stuff called stupid, right? But in that space of authenticity, you get to learn from the stupid thing that you did and like why it wasn't. And initially, for example, one of the things that we did that we started off as a navigation device. And at first we were like, hey, eventually we'll help people who are blind and visually impaired. But first we need to try haptics out on people who are sighted, make sure this really works, get the system really robust. And for six months, we were selling products to travelers as a way of not having to look at your phone when you're traveling out at a new location. I would spend 30 minutes trying to explain to people why a visual-based map was even a problem. I imagine like Henry Ford must have felt the same way when he was like, you know, <laughs> asking people what they wanted and they like a fast a horse. No one knew what the word haptic meant. It's just not a common thing in the lexicon at the moment. And so it's like, it was just selling people in a vision that they couldn't even understand was a really big challenge. And then one of the things that we realized that happened amazingly was that when we went to South by Southwest in 2016, we basically met a person, pulled them out of the crowd, had them try to wave band out. And they were like, happened to be a teacher for the Texas school for the blind and visually impaired. And he was like, wow, this is amazing. You need to take this to the school right now. And so Kevin and I, being quite literal, 
packed up our booth because it was our last day in town and we ran straight over to the school. They were closed because it was spring break. So (laughs) (laughs) there was no one there except for the superintendent who happened to show up. But a big piece of it was, is that he directed us to the Texas Department for Blind Services, which was right around the corner. We walked into the parking lot, met some random people and was like, hey, we have a device that we think might help people who are blind, visually impaired navigate. We'd like to talk to some people to see if that's true. And somebody was like, oh, go talk to this desk. And then another person was like, so what's the device you got? <laughs> and it turns out that he was the head of assistive technology. And basically, after he spun around, we got like a rolling carpet to the commissioner. And after spending four hours there, we all walked out was like, wow, everyone understands innately what it is that we're trying to do here without explaining to them what it is that we're trying to do. Because every single person that we met that was blind knew what the word haptic meant. So it was like, we walked out was like, this is going to be a challenge to start with this market and prove the technology too. But we also knew that if we start here and we prove it here, no one will have any doubts about what's possible. So we kind of took it as the mantle to carry and to pick up. And like, if you can prove it here, the whole world is the oyster for what this technology can do in so many different facets. But first, we need to show them what the word haptic means. Absolutely. And I think that can be difficult. A lot of cases, you've got 10 seconds, 15 seconds to sort of convince people that your product is something that can have a big impact, something that they need. So what is, if you had to kind of boil it down to that short pitch, how do you tell people about your product in a really concise and easy to understand way? I think Marcus Engel, who is our advisor, he said it best. He said, it's kind of like having an extra set of eyes overlooking you, making sure you don't go too far to the left or too far to the right by giving you a slight vibration. I think the piece is, is that feeling really is believing in our case. And so when I try to explain the haptic corridor, I've gotten into intellectual conversations that have spent like hours. But when I give them the haptic corridor and I say, spin around, And then I say, now spin again and stop in a direction you think the device is telling you is the right way to go. And 90% of the people can figure it out. And most of those people have never, ever heard the word haptic before. Oh, that's amazing. And I love that kind of description. Feeling is believing. I think in a lot of cases, you do have to try it to really fully understand what it can do and the impacts that you might be able to get in terms of benefits from your own life. So if our listeners want to learn more about Wearworks and Wayband, Keith, what is the best way for them to do so? The best way to do so is you can go to our website at www.wear.works. W-O-R-K-S. You can also go straight to the app store and type in Wayband. We just launched back in March and the downloads are really going great. And we offer a one month free trial for anyone who downloads the app. You really want to make sure that you use it and like it first before you have to pay for it. And then also, the other piece is please connect with us on social media, on our Instagram at where.works. We really love hearing from the community directly. And we're always open for opportunities to find new ways to partner with the community. One of the initiatives that we're working on is, is a refer program that won't put a cap on users that love the way band that refer it to other users within the blind and visually impaired or non-blind and visually impaired community as well. Because we're also working with the sighted community, hikers, travelers, runners. We're working with the deaf blind community, the wheelchair using community, both manual and power. And we're looking at opportunities to connect with the neurodivergent community as well. So this is really a more accessible way of navigating. And we really welcome you to try it out. Give us your feedback. Honestly, we love the authenticity and we'll do what we can to make it better. That's kind of our commitment to the product and to the process. Phenomenal. Well, Keith, thank you so much for sharing that generous offer for our listeners. And listeners, check out these resources if you'd like to learn more about Wayband. Keith, it's been a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you so much for joining us on the show. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Listeners, we are excited to let you know about the Cerebral Palsy Alliance Research Foundation's upcoming September campaign during the month of September. Each year, amazing people like you from around the world participate in this virtual health and wellness challenge to help us raise funds to support life-changing research and innovation for cerebral palsy. In 2021, we raised $1.86 million, and this year, we are hoping to reach even more people to further advance critical, life-changing science for people with cerebral palsy. 
Registration opens on July 20th, but you can pre-register in advance. Visit www.steptember.us to sign up and learn more about how our September trainers can help you support a great cause and reach your fitness goals. Now, listeners, I am excited to introduce you all to our second guest, Markeith Price. And Markeith has been using Wayband now for a few weeks. So, Markeith, we are excited to welcome you to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, how are you guys doing? I'm excited as well. Thank you so much for having me. Well, we are thrilled to have you here. I'm doing well myself, and I'm looking forward to diving into the conversation and hearing about some of your experiences. So I guess to start off with, for listeners who maybe don't know you, can you tell our listeners a little bit more about yourself? So my name is Mark Keith Price. I am a two-time Paralympic champion. I am from Baltimore, Maryland. I also run track and field within the Paralympics. So my events are the 400 and on down. So I'm a sprinter and a jumper. I actually was diagnosed with optic nerve atrophy at the age of three years old. And now I'm running track and field in grad school. I'm married. I have a wife and a dog. And I do a lot of different things from volunteering with classroom champions. I also have a foundation myself. It's called ICU Foundation which we provide scholarships to the visually impaired and blind community. And I also am starting my own business. It's called Move Progress. And yeah, there's a lot more, but I guess that's a good introduction of who I am. Oh, fantastic. Markeith, I don't know how you fit it all in in a day with all your training as well. So (laughs) I am impressed. So tell us then, how did you first find out about Wayband? It's interesting because I actually was in a coaching counseling session maybe six, seven years ago. And I don't know if I talked to Keith about this, but the guy, he had told me, hey, have you heard of the Wayband? And I found out about the guy that ran the marathon. So I heard about that news just as much as anybody else. And I'm always learning about technology, finding out about technology. So fast forward six years from now, My friend was at South by Southwest in Austin and my friend saw Keith and he just talked to him because I guess he really liked his style, his jacket, thought he was really fresh. And then Keith started telling my friend who he was and my friend introduced himself and then basically just said, hey, I know this guy named Mark Keith. He's visually impaired. He's a Paralympian. He's a programmer. He does so many different things. I can't even explain it. You should talk to him. So basically, I got introduced to Wayband and I found out more about Wayband this year. That's amazing. So then what was it like the first time you actually were able to put it on and use it? Oh, man, it's awesome. It's hard to explain, but it also is like one of those things where you got to have it. But it's so helpful towards my navigation and just me being able to be comfortable when I'm traveling and going into a space, knowing that I can just plug in my location and walk to my destination. It's one of those things where you're not expecting that the vibration that it's giving, like, I mean, we have our Apple watches or our our smart watches, but this is a different type of smart device that really, really helps you navigate to where you need to go. So it just was incredible. It was a great feeling. I really liked it a lot. Oh, fantastic. So can you take me and our listeners into that moment? Let's say you put the Wayband on your wrist. You've got the app. What was it like for you? What was that experience? The first thing I would say the experience is really just putting it on and feeling the lightness of this smart device and just being able to have it sit comfortably on your wrist without you even realizing that it's actually there. But then when you plug in your location, when you put your location into the GPS and you want to go to your destination and let's say you start going left, but left could be the wrong way. When you go the wrong way, that vibration, the technology, it sends the signal to you and it just keeps vibrating until you turn around or going to the right direction. So I think it's one of those experiences that It just makes you feel so excited to be able to have something that's actually going to get me to my destination and not turn me around. 
Definitely. And did you find it to be pretty intuitive to kind of adjust to those vibrations? So, yeah, I think that the band is definitely intuitive. It's a natural feel for you to have to go into the directions that the band is telling you to. I mean, it's definitely comfortable. It's nothing like the vibration is definitely a constant, but it's subtle. But you know that it's there. So it's nothing that is so turned up. It's nowhere near uncomfortable. It's actually a comfortable thing because it's helping you get to your next destination. And then also you can look cool with the band as well. So it's going to add to your style. So that's the other thing. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. And I think that's important. That's something that a lot of people take for granted when they're designing products is like people actually have to wear this in everyday life. So (laughs) when you have the way band and say you're at a party or something like that, you have the band on, people are going to ask you, what's that? And you can explain it to them and they're going to be looking at you like the cool person in the room. Definitely. (laughs) It's a good conversation starter, too. So can you tell us, Markeith, has Wayband already, even in just these few weeks, had a positive impact on your life? And if so, can you maybe tell us about some of the things that might have changed for you? Most definitely. I think that just having this tool when I get up and walk and say I want to go to a coffee shop that I've never been to or I'm in a new location, I think that it's definitely improved my life to be able to know where I'm going. And because I travel so much or maybe it's because I'm so busy and maybe I just forget the location to get there or I get turned around, I think that it just adds that extra piece that I've been looking for to help me get to my destinations. I'm actually about to go to Florida, so I will be using it every day to go to where I need to go. Oh, that's fantastic. I think it's nice to just have one less thing to worry about in life as you're just navigating the tasks you have to do. So thinking about our listeners out there, Markeith, who do you think might benefit from using Wayband? Everyone can benefit from getting the Wayband. You have definitely your visually impaired community. So the visually impaired and blind community, I believe that is a major piece that will help us to navigate and help us to get to our destinations easier and faster and not have to worry about trying to always look at a screen or listen to the screen. If you think about it, you have your deaf community. So that vibration gives you that feeling. So that's something that's going to help them as well. And then when you think about mobility as a whole, and you think about people that may be quadriplegic or someone that might be just using a wheelchair or even someone that has cerebral palsy, the way band will definitely benefit those individuals and the disability community as a whole. I just truly believe that it will make a big impact on how they get around and how we, because I'm a part of the community as well, navigate to our next destination. And then I just think people as a whole, you know, some people forget how to get to places. Some people actually need that help to get to their destination. I really feel like when you're in a rush, you get turned around or you're in a new city. So someone that might be in a new place, that's definitely helpful. So everyone can benefit from wearing the wave band. Absolutely. And I think even for myself, I'm directionally challenged. So I think I fall into this latter category. But you sort of hate when you're in a new place to kind of be glued to your phone and not be able to look around and kind of take in everything around you. So I'm so glad you mentioned that as well. I think that's the powerful piece about it is that you can plug your location in and then you can put your phone in your pocket. Now you can walk a little bit more freer and not necessarily have to worry about looking at the phone and then trying to figure out if you're actually going the right direction. It's definitely for the directional challenge. (laughs) (laughs) Fantastic. So if we have listeners out there, Markeith, who are considering giving Wayband a try, do you have a message that you'd like to share with them? Yes, I definitely do. I have a a good message just saying the way band is for you. It's for everyone. It's the future. It's a band that literally helps you to navigate to your next destination better than what you've ever seen before. I really believe in the way band and the WearWorks team and what they're doing for the future of technology and getting you around to navigate. That is fantastic. So where can our listeners go to learn more, Markeith, about you and what you do? 
So yeah, a lot of people can find me on Instagram at Markeith Price. And you can find me on YouTube at Markeith Price. You guys should go check out that page as well. We talk about technology. I talk about my visual impairment and just athletic things and a lot of great new technology and how I actually navigate technology as a visually impaired individual. I also, once again, have a foundation. It's called ICU Foundation. You can go to the website, I, the letter C, Y O U Foundation, Inc.com. You also can find my other website, moveprogresspro.com. And you can just scroll down and you'll see a little link that will have the ICU Foundation logo just to give you multiple places to find where we're at and what we do. One of the major things that we work on at ICU Foundation is providing scholarships to the visually impaired and the blind and also different resources. So anywhere from funding to resources to other organizations that deal with the visually impaired and blind community. Also with Move Progress Productions, the goal is basically to find a way to provide accessible, equitable opportunities for the visually impaired and the blind community, whether that is helping with funding towards their business or funding towards maybe their future, whatever that may be, we're working towards that. So you guys can locate us on those spaces. We're also on Instagram and we're also wanting to develop some technology ourselves. Now, one of the great things about Wayband Wayband is partnering with ICU Foundation to give out two bands or basically however many scholarships we decide to give out each year. The recipients will receive a Wayband in one year, a free subscription to the Wayband. You can go to the Wayband app subscription. So that's really awesome. We get to provide some great technology towards our recipients. And then we can see how that actually brings an impact to their lives and see how that actually has assisted them along their journey to education and business. Fantastic. Well, Mark Heath, we appreciate you joining us to share your insights and experience with all of our listeners today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. I appreciate you all. And thank you so much for having me. Well, it's been a pleasure to chat with you. We appreciate your time as well. And listeners, it's been great to have you with us here as well. We would be grateful if you could take a moment to leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform to let everyone know what you think of the show. And we look forward to connecting with you again in our next episode of Changing What's Possible. 